What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Having Said That Show. I'm your co-host, Adi, alongside Jay. What's up, guys? And guys, on today's episode, we have a guest that I think I've wanted to get ever since we started the show. Messaged him a bunch of times. Life unfolded. We started working with his company as a partner on the show. Of course, you guys know Blue Tech Eye. Today, we have the co-founder and CEO of Blue Tech Eye, Matt Chitranjan, with us. All right. Thanks for having me, guys. Glad to be here. Did I pronounce your last name correctly? Yeah. Okay, awesome. I was like practicing in the mirror, <laughs> you know? <laughs> in school, I was called Matt C. Oh, Matt C? <laughs> yeah, because no one can pronounce my last name. How you been, Matt? How's your day been so good, far? Good, good. Enjoying the change of weather here in Bombay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, dude. I, I always prefer it hotter. Like, I think it was cold for me as well. And he was just like, dude, it's 18 degrees. It's fine. Yeah. I was like freezing my ass off. <laughs> Come to Delhi. Um, I think one of the, uh, one of the things I really wanted to start off by saying was I messaged you in August of 2022. I think that's two months after we started the show, right? Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, and you had gone on some podcast, which was like an audio only podcast. And I sent you a message, which was now, now that I hear it so rude, I was like, yeah. Yo, you should come on a show. People actually watch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm glad you finally made it. Yeah. I, I remember that message. Well, <laughs> <laughs> like who is, who is this guy? <laughs> so first thing I wanted to say was while doing research about you, of course, I found out that you were born and raised in America. Uh, you studied at UBC found your way into an NGO, went to Jordan, and then through a project for uh, IFRM, is that? IFMR. IFMR, yeah. you found yourself in Chennai. Yeah. And then most of the interviews ended there of like, oh, you found yourself in Chennai, and then you just lived here in Mumbai. No one asked you what made you stay here, because it's a big change from obviously living in America to living in Chennai. Yeah. And I have a suspicion that it was your wife. Yeah, so I, I I moved to India thinking that I'd be here for a year and then uh -huh. I would move on to uh, another assignment or find another job somewhere else. It just so happened that uh, life had other plans. I at, at the place that I was working in Chennai, Namrata was also working there. Then we started dating, then we got married, then uh, then the, she's not really interested in moving back to the US. Yeah. So, okay. uh, but she actually really liked living in Chennai, but having, so I went to college in New York, then I was living in San Francisco, then I was living in Vancouver. So I was used to a bit more vibrant cities. Sure. So Chennai, though, so my, my father's from Chennai, my family lives in Chennai. So there's a lot of connection there, but I just found it as a city was a bit traditional and kind of slow paced. Sure. So, so we moved to Delhi. For you guys who don't know, Namrita is also the, the second co-founder of Blue Tika and Matt and her have obviously grown the company together. And that's kind of where I wanted to jump off from because obviously if it feels like you got very lucky in finding a partner that is a partner for life, but also a business partner. Now, I'm, I want to admit that I feel like I'm in the position where I know the girl I'm going to marry and I'm going to have as a partner for the rest of my life. And it is something that I want to learn from you in how you, how you guys navigate the relationship of doing business and life. I would say we do it pretty poorly. <laughs> uh, it's a, a, a lot of, uh, a lot of the conversations we have are around trying to find the right balance between work and not working. So I think one of the good things about, so starting a business requires a lot of time and effort. So, uh, especially in the initial phases, it was like 18 hour days. And if, if let's say one of us was doing that by ourselves then we would never see the other person. Sure. So the advantage is that you get to do that together. So you get to spend that time with each other, but the downside is there's no end to it, right? There's no distinction between home and work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think that's, uh, that's sort of the flip side of it. Yeah, well, let me draw a parallel, bro. Like we work together and yeah. we're pretty good friends, right? So when we work out <laughs> or when we're hanging out together, it's uh, it's it's almost like, I don't know if you feel like you have to kind of separate work from your alone time. You know, like when we're working out, it's so easy to be like, okay, what's, what's the plan for next episode? What's the thing for like, whatever. You have to like consciously segregate that and just kind of move forward. Yeah, but yeah. I, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm asking him because I find it very hard. Like even with both of y'all, whenever yeah. I meet you, I'm always yeah. like thinking about the show. No, exactly. But I, I think there comes a point where you have to like consciously be like, okay, this can wait for like a meeting or whatever. You yeah, know it's what hard I mean? to do though. It's it really is, hard it is, it do. is. Like even we slip sometimes, we slip into like, we'll, we'll be doing like an intense workout and then we'll just be talking about like a guest or whatever. Yeah. But um, I think the main thing would be to just recognize that for the 
product or work you guys have to get along yeah. and if you guys have to get along you can't always be talking about work yeah. you know so <laughs> I, i think that's like the the I thing i think also like we're very complimentary we're very different people but especially for uh blue tokai or for for the business like she has a skill set that i didn't have sure. i have a skill set that she didn't have so in that way and i think if we were both in the same field there would be a lot more clashes uh how long was it uh, until after you guys were together that you all decided to start blue tokai together Uh so we actually got married very quickly. We met in I think February and, and by October we were we were oh, married. Whoa. Uh so nice. uh, well, October we were engaged. <laughs> October Jeez, we're engaged. Lock it down, bro. Lock it down. Bro. <laughs> yeah. In March March we got married. But uh so it was you know we got married in March and by September we started the Damn, that's crazy, bro. That's yeah. that's cool. That's, that's that seems cool. like you have to have a lot of faith in both yourself yeah. and her and the business to kind of do yeah, that. Yeah, so I think we had a lot of faith in each other. The business we started kind of just more as a like, like it started as a business, but it was more like a personal desire for us to have sure. coffee to drink. So yeah. we started on a very small scale with we didn't put like a business plan together or anything. Sure. It was just like uh We want this type of coffee, so let's try and make it, and we'll find other people. And we're both like, of y'all working on it full time from the get go. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So you guys quit the job soon after you got married to do this, and yeah. Uh, yeah so you mentioned that you were gonna do, you were gonna brew something else, and then how did you guys eventually switch to coffee? So we were both at points in our lives where we wanted to do something on our own, and I really wanted to do something physical. Like I've always worked with um, like desk jobs on on a laptop. So I really wanted to kind of like do something a bit physical, um, and so I I love beer, and so I used to brew beer as a hobby. Uh, but starting a brewery requires way more money than we had. Plus, there's a licensing aspect to it, and so we actually we had gone on a vacation to Ladakh, mm-hmm. and Namrata was like, "Let's start a coffee company." I was like, "Yeah, that's great. Let's do it." <laughs> yeah. I guess the first thing that you guys had to encounter when you all started the company, from what I heard from Namrata's interviews, were. Um, this this reluctance from the farmers to sell you guys the highest quality beans or not reluctance but just a lack of faith in the fact that the indian consumers would want that and uh something i found funny i was just imagining the the situation of you and namita walking to a farmer and trying to talk to them with the accent that you have <laughs> was there a language barrier that you all had to deal with no no luckily all the all, all the the growers are you know they're very fluent in in english but okay. uh I Any actually, particular funny interactions with them while y'all were trying to convince them to sell you guys beans? Yeah, I mean, I think I've I've told this story before, but uh, one of the first meetings that we had, we were in in this guy's office. Uh, he's like, "I'll sell you this coffee," but uh, no one in India is willing to pay the price that uh, you're gonna have to charge. Uh, you'll have to mix it with robusta. You have to mix it with chicory. Hmm. Um, otherwise, your business will fail. Um so so that was a bit disheartening for for us to hear because he didn't feel like uh, like there was going to be our business would work out. Um luckily his 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 son was in the back and he's like no dad they're trying to do something different. They understand. I mean there'll be people who are who are oh, trying to Yo shout out shout out that dude man. Yeah, what's because his name? You remember his you, name? You know the yeah. thing is do you remember his name? Shout him out. Yeah, no, no, I, I know his name but <laughs> okay. I, I, I'm sure his dad's not going to be too happy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And like uh, no, but I, I think he knew something that his dad maybe didn't because maybe in his generation people didn't care yeah, as totally. much. Yeah, totally, hundred percent. But in our generation, especially, it surprises me that you said that because I feel like a lot of people really care about the coffee they consume and the type of coffee they consume. And like you said, we have two coffee enthusiasts over here. So to imagine that. People wouldn't be able to pay the prices while hmm. to heal, you know. Yeah. So I mean, he comes from a time when, uh, so previously, you used to have to sell all your coffee to the coffee board, and so you didn't get a premium if you grew better quality coffee or or lower quality coffee got the same price. So oh. they they so there was a group of growers that then after liberalization happened they started going outside of India and sure. pitching their coffee and so they saw a demand from the export market. Mm. So he felt that like India at this at that point in time wasn't really ready for a specialty coffee. Is it is it true that like India got coffee because someone went to I forget where they went but they they <laughs> hid coffee in their beard and then they came back to India <laughs> and they started growing it. Is I that, mean I don't know about the beard story, <laughs> yeah. but uh, definitely it came from his... it came from uh, uh, I think uh, Yemen, Yemen or yes. yeah Yemen. Yeah, yeah. And then he he was a, a pilgrim, and then he smuggled he smuggled it in because it wasn't allowed. Actually, Yemen uh, didn't allow anybody to take the, the yeah, beans. Yeah, exactly. Out. Yeah, so he smuggled it in, and then that's how it started. Yeah. I'd like to think it was the beard, <laughs> but yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know. You'd have to have a pretty big beard to yeah. <laughs> <laughs> see it's in there. 
um, the thing you mentioned about them um, going outside and selling beans to uh, because of the foreign demand. There's actually a very common thing in India, right? Like all the best produce that we have, whether it's like the mangoes or the coffee or you know all the fruits, the good, the best quality stuff is always sent abroad. Yeah, and then the other, the second tier quality stays here. So, I mean, that's something you guys have also encountered with the beans. I'm I'm guessing yeah. like, and I think your mission is to promote Indian beans. So how's that been? Yeah, so I think uh, I mean there was a other funny story when when we first started is that. Um, people didn't even really know that India grew coffee. And uh, this, I was at, uh, did an event at the Oprah, it was so some five-star hotel. You would think that these the people at this event are you know well-traveled and have a good understanding of things. And he was like, your coffee's pretty good, but you know, the best <laughs> coffee, it's grown in Germany. You know, the black forest, they have some soil conditions there, that the coffee there is just really amazing. And he was just mistaking that some roaster in Germany, like <laughs> they, they, yeah. they, they grew that coffee. So uh, I think there was a lot of, misconceptions that we had to kind of overcome in the beginning. But um, I think we started at a really good time because it was sort of when homegrown brands were starting to take off. Yeah. So it wasn't just with coffee, it was with like yogurt or cheese mm. or mm. meat and all these consumer products. You, at, at, when we started in like 2013, all of these brands were starting to take off and become, you know, people were starting to appreciate that good quality stuff is available here. You don't have to get imported stuff for it to be good quality. Yeah, and see, these guys like the coffee aspect, right? I like the outlets that you guys have. So I think our coffee hang sessions started at, what was it? Was it Coffee Bean in Inox? Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf. Yeah, Coffee yeah. Bean and Tea Leaf. So CBT that was like where we used to uh, sneak away from our parents like after school yeah. with our dates at that time. <laughs> <laughs> years old and like hang yeah, out. it was it was cool, man. And then obviously, like you said, you started the right time because Starbucks came up. It just came to India. Yeah. Then it created like that whole cafe culture, you know, like Cafe Coffee Day, Coffee Bean, Starbucks. And then you guys kind of just took over from them by giving you like a space to hang out and good coffee, you know? So I think that was the gap that was missing was that you produce like actually good quality products and we can chill and hang out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, actually cafes were never really a part of what we initially Ooh. intended to do. Yeah. Uh, we, we first started selling online then we started selling B2B to like other restaurants and, and other cafes. It was only when we moved into this place in, in Delhi, it's called Say the Job. Um, it, at that point in time, it was the middle of nowhere. There were chicken warehouses and, mm. and down a, it was basically an urban village. You had to go down a gully. You number that was like, no one is ever going to come here. <laughs> we shouldn't take this place. I was like, it doesn't matter. We just need a cheap place to open up a roastery. Um, but we had some extra space and so yeah, we man. thought, let's open up a cafe. Yeah. And I feel it, like if you build it, people will come. Yeah. Like, no, it, people, people will chase quality. I think if you're enthusiastic about something, you will go to any lengths to kind of go and get it. I feel and that was really surprising to us. We never expected that people would be even the first Bombay location. I remember was the Malakshmi one. Yeah. And, uh, we have a funny story cause I think we were like 18 at the time and 18 or 19. And, uh, one of our friends had hosted a seminar at a, at a store nearby Dude, yeah. to where you guys were. Yeah. And it was the weekend of my birthday. So we'd gone out the night before and this was like an eight hour long seminar, 18 years old. I did not want to attend it. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, we yeah. were very drunk to the point where like when we showed up to the seminar, so we were really, really drunk. And the first thing they was like, yo, you guys want coffee? We're like, yes, yes, please. Yeah. Anything that'll get into our mouths right now. Yeah. And then... <laughs> <laughs> and and the first thing and the first thing they sent was the almond croissants and a flat white and I remember having that at like eight a.m. on a yeah. monsoon day and yeah, it just yeah, yeah. It good, it made man. me fall it in love. Good. Bro. It was good. Yeah. Yeah. There was a there was a quote I think uh, uh, in one of the interviews which said we want to be known as the coffee company and not as a cafe company. Yeah, and I think that's yet the mission, right? Yeah. So I mean, I think you know coffee especially specialty coffee it wasn't really well known you can only do so much online communication you can only do so many seminars so for us we found that having the cafes was really important in terms of kind of getting people to taste it that's the biggest thing yeah and you get like non-coffee enthusiasts as well you yeah. know what i mean we were huge fans of the bcbt which is the <laughs> breech candy blue to guy uh like we have we've done like shoots over there these guys took over like the space over there as well and it kind of brings together coffee lovers yeah. and people who are just just happen to be there as well you know and then they turn into like since i've started this show i've been more and more conscious of like the coffee that i'm drinking and stuff 
not to their extent but I, definitely I, more yeah i wanted to so when you were talking about the suppliers and obviously the fact that you're competing with export prices uh how did you all navigate that or did you all kind of maintain the price that they were charging overseas over here as well yeah so they're not willing to charge a significantly lower price to us just because we're here so we have to come close to what they're uh able to get when they export that coffee I've, there's some there's some like savings that they get because they don't have to do the export documentation and worry about the shipping but we yeah. pay almost the same price at the ex, uh, that they get in the export market and was that kind of productive in the beginning stages of like having to sell a bag of coffee in India for like 600 rupees. Yeah, at that point in time, uh coffee prices were lower. So I think we started selling around 400 in the beginning. Okay. Uh but it was still significantly higher than kind of what CCD was selling the coffee at. Mm. So pricing was always a uh, I mean it continues to be a, mm. a a challenge. So okay, on the theme of taking a bet on yourself and proving other people wrong, uh something we love doing on the show is asking people for their controversial opinion. Their most controversial opinion preferably in their field but it could be it could be anything do you have one for us yeah so i i have i don't know how controversial it is but i think that matching socks is a totally waste of time i think that i, I don't say, know oh, okay. why anybody spends time <laughs> trying to like after laundry trying to go through everything put their socks together can we together. see what you're wearing right yeah, now yeah so i'm not wearing matching socks i got Damn. one okay, okay okay and i got one red one oh. so let's take uh, in business and fashion <laughs> <laughs> I think it's I think it's a it's a form of discipline to dress well and to match your socks, you know. He's a big socks matcher. Yeah. So fair. so the time that I save on that, you know, brewing the perfect cup of coffee <laughs> that you spend, right? So oh, I like that. Uh, there's I the like trade off there. Okay. So you always you always lose the one sock yeah, right? see, it always yeah. happens and then why throw it away yeah, why yeah, throw yeah. it away like i feel like you're like the mark zuckerberg of coffee where you're just like i, i don't care about what i'm wearing my so i don't <laughs> care i don't care about my socks i'm just going to put them on and like go for so it why, why don't you just get all white socks for the same brand then you never have to worry about matching i what? mean so i wear typically very boring clothes like okay. you can see i'm wearing a plain, plain blue shirt and a plain pants so you know at least with the socks okay. Okay. Where's, the fun? where's the fun in the uh, yeah, yeah. at least my feet are having a party <laughs> okay i like that controversial bit are you guys have any socks opinions <laughs> i i don't like um you know the socks you wear with uh, loafers like the yeah. no show socks yeah, 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 i think yeah, those yeah. are gross man dude yeah. you used to rock like no shows like yeah yeah, yeah. Like but we also used to rock skinny jeans you know Oh, I still, yeah. I still wear those no, no that's show crazy, socks, bro. but purely for the utility of it. No I don't wear it in loafers. Like, yeah, you kind of have to, to, bro. Yeah. You can't wear them, especially in Bombay. If you wear loafers without socks, it's crazy, bro. No, you I think, lo- I think long socks are back with loafers. Long socks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With loafers, yeah. I don't know about that, dude. I don't know. I'm just I out for like, loafers in I, general. I hate like thick socks. That's yeah. I hate like thick socks. I guess it's because the climate we live in. It's yeah. kind of like your feet are gonna be boiling. but like i'm just not a thick sock guy yeah, i think being I from delhi that you have to layer up right it's crazy yeah. there now yeah yeah so i mean you're not going to be wearing loafers with no socks <laughs> yeah <laughs> right. no, that's for sure bro oh man i don't know i i trying to think of my most controversial sock opinion <laughs> it's it's a I it's hate, a I, I hate socks oh we should talk about the sock thing you tried to make me do at your house What? the other day oh dude okay yeah let's okay. let's talk about it bro yeah. if you want to get into it right now we can get into it right now wait 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 yeah, is it an impromptu to judge matt judge matt <laughs> okay do we have the gavel on the shelf we do of course okay, okay so you want to get into this right things, now we can okay we do these things where we have really ridiculous arguments we like our guests to like settle them for us sure. okay so this is something that happened a week ago okay. you are judge matt you can kind of hear our sides of the story All right. and go for it okay i wasn't really prepared for this but i i, I have strong though. feelings about this okay the cool court is in session okay <laughs> am i the the he's the wait, defendant i'm the I'm defendant the i'm the plaintiff yeah, the, the plaintiff j okay, versus cool. uh, the defendant aditya in the case of the sock the stinky sock the stinky sock oh, syndrome oh, yeah. wow. the case of the stinky sock syndrome <laughs> Okay. Opening arguments. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Why don't you go first? You can, you can take it. Sure. So, Jane and I had just wrapped up a workout. We had a HSD meeting right after. I had showered. I just recently got out of the shower. Um, my meal was in front of me, and we were all sitting. We were all sitting on the dining table where we usually convene for our meetings, and uh, suddenly, right next to my bowl of rajma chawal, I see a pair of Jay socks that he just worn at the workout. and i'm like yo jay can you move these away because i don't want this in the line of sight yeah, yeah, yeah. or even on the table while i'm sure. eating and he's like yeah why don't you just move it away i was like they're your socks i just showered i feel like you should move them away and he refused 
And I think that is grounds for a violation of just normal hygiene ethic. So that's the charge I'm levying on Jay today. Okay, so I just want to make... It's pretty convincing. I, I, I want to make a couple of things clear, okay? Okay. First of all, his dinner was not right in front of him. Okay. Okay. We work out together all the time. Okay, we, we, we sesh together like maybe five days out of seven. Okay. Now, I didn't think it was such a big deal for him to just move my socks, even flick them. I was inside. I was still working out. And he was like, bro, come move your socks. I was like, just, just flick them. You can even flick them on the floor. It's fine. He just refused to touch them. And I was so offended by it. I was like, bro, if you can't even, if you can't even move my dirty socks, what are we doing? Why are we friends? We, we share a podcast together. You know, we work out like five days of the week. I see you all the time. You can't brush my dirty socks aside. But why know. were your socks on the table? That's the problem, Jay. But, you know. <laughs> it, it was one of those things. Dude, in the heat of the moment when you're working out, when you're squatting, after you take your socks off, you just chuck them. They happen to land it on, they happen to land on the, the table. <laughs> you know, his dinner was not out at the time. I'm also, just like, and he was like, yo, just move I it. I was in. like, bro, we're so close. We're, we're literally like, we've grown up together. We've known each other since the seventh grade. You can't brush my socks aside. Like I have to, I have to stop my workout. I don't think that workout. has anything to do with just hygiene. Of course it does, bro. That's that's what you're missing, bro. That's I it's not about hygiene. Well, let's let's hear what the it's judge has to say. It's not about hygiene. It's so, about a it's about a personal relationship that has been squandered. Let's okay. Let's just I think put it out we. There. Yeah. So I agree that it's possible that you could have moved the socks to the side, but. But I think you're trying to make a point. Like, why are you putting your socks there in the first place? You should remove them. So I'm going to have to side with you. There we go. Okay. Open and shut. Also, Open Jay, I'm shut. a bit of an environmentalist. I don't want to wash my hands again. You know, waste <laughs> water. Okay. Jay, yeah, 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 you made a good argument, but... It, it is. I, I think for me, it was deeper than just the socks being on the table. Yeah. <laughs> I think for him also, it was deeper. It was no, deeper. no, 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 no. It, it's, it's not like this is a recurring issue. This has never happened before. Ever. So, I mean, yeah, it, it is what it is. You Let's see. Now it never will. Then yeah. that's the point. I mean. <laughs> okay, well, I feel like you got to know a little bit of us in this segment. <laughs> uh, we have a segment where we want to get to know you since uh, Brutica has always been about transparency, but I feel like you haven't always been transparent so let's let's get to it and All we right. do have we have a segment on this show called hst unfiltered where we brew coffee and then everyone we have like our whole cast in here and we just kind of go one by one and we kind of get some stuff off our chest so this is kind of what we're trying to do right now with you sounds good okay so let's start with some light questions and jay if you have any deeper questions yeah what are your like political them? and religious beliefs <laughs> <laughs> are you trying to get your show canceled <laughs> okay your favorite bollywood movie Honestly, I haven't seen. You haven't seen any, <laughs> like zero, bro. No, I've seen like Lunchbox. I've seen. Uh, uh, this is something that I think, I think we'll get a note. Remove this. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that might be the only one. But I've been like, there's been all these net uh, Netflix shows that I've been watching. That which ones? Good. Like uh, Cora. Cora. Oh, I've seen that that's on. A good, on that's, that's a good, that's a good, good one. one. And the one with. Um, uh, oh man, I'm so the guy, bad with the, the, the dude who's in yeah, the yeah, show. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, what is what is your favorite like sitcom? What's your favorite TV show of all time? Curb Your Enthusiasm. Oh, oh wait, wait, no, wait, that's crazy, crazy bro. You know fact? So having said that, is literally. Do you remember that bit that Larry and uh, Seinfeld do on a Curb episode where he's like, "This is the most useless phrase ever." Having said that, because yeah. it's preceded by yeah, a lot yeah. of information. That that's how we got our name. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. 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 Huge, huge uh, Curb fans. We have a we have a shelf item somewhere that Sid actually made for uh, Aditya oh. for his um, was it your, his birthday? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah where is that? that? He had done like you a- You think it's inside the book maybe? No, I will find it for you. We'll, 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 we'll oh, check nice. it out. Yeah, yeah, new season's coming out. Very yeah, excited. last season as well I, though. Yeah. I know no one who's a Curb fan apart from Adi. I don't, I don't know anyone else who likes that show that much. Really? Yeah. yeah. It's a great fan. You like crazy. Seinfeld as well then? Yeah, yeah. Okay, sick, yeah. Wow. sick. But Curb over Seinfeld? Yeah. Same. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's um, cool, man. That's cool. What's the one dish or ingredient that you hate? Like you cannot ingest it into your body? Uh... I I like pretty much anything. Uh, I'm not really a huge fan of dessert, actually. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. So you're not much of a dessert guy? You don't like it even with the pairing of coffee? No. Nah. Do you like sweet coffee? No. No, right? Yeah. yeah. Even I'm not a huge dessert yeah. guy at all, bro. Yeah. Well, well, the only dessert I like is uh, kaju cutli. That's my uh, okay. one, one weakness. Yes. Yeah. I remember I went to his house once 
and his mom knew that I liked it, so she just kept putting it in my plate. I just kept eating it. I didn't say no. Yeah, I yeah. just didn't say no. I ended up having like fifteen of them, yeah, yeah. and I was just sitting there like, just feed me more. It's yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> okay, it's time for the questions. You got a bit more real. Okay. What's the second best coffee shop in India? Second Ooh. best coffee shop. So I think. There's a bunch, actually. Uh, oh, we just nice. want one. I like it. No way. I like the, no way. We don't I need like a bunch. Approach. <laughs> 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 so the quick brown fox, I really like. That's I'm sorry, say that quick again. Quick brown fox. Quick brown fox. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. Uh, also a Delhi cafe that that I like. That's in Delhi. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Um, the one artist always on your playlist. Oh man, I'm so I'm old. That's okay. <laughs> uh, so it, and Namrata gives me a hard time about this, but I like a lot of this kind of like. Uh, uh, indie from from when I was in college, so I, I was in college in like '99 to '03. So Radiohead, I, I'm oh like, wow, yeah, I'm, bro. Okay, Computer's one of my favorite albums yeah. all the time. Okay, sick. Yeah. Good, good choice. Um, Give us another. I like I like old music more than he does, so I'm interested in <laughs> what you listen to. Give me like four more. What are you, what are your top five artists of all time? Uh, so top five artists of all time. Go for it. I think recently I've been still kind of in that phase. So I've been listening to uh, Interpol, Grizzly Bear, Sick. kind of uh, these same genre type. Nice. Nice. Love it. Um, what is a random subject that you know too much about and coffee, beer doesn't count? Uh, so, I mean, I, I, I used to work in economics, so I know quite a bit about economics. Okay, but that's not random. Then. Like a super, like super random. <laughs> like, like salmon <laughs> your, your favorite type like that kind of shit bro like. actually we the other idea that we had was to do uh, 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 shrimp farming that's really else oh, that oh that. that's cool bro uh, growing mushrooms was another one that we okay. had looked at uh, I used to what kind of mushroom so uh, actually in, in college I used to grow the other mushrooms <laughs> <laughs> but not those mushrooms for 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 business are you cool to talk about your trip experiences uh sure okay give us your when what was the first time you tripped uh in high school actually in Whoa, high school that's early yeah and so this was been... still while you were in america you were in um i'm forgetting where you grew yeah, up yeah i grew up in wisconsin wisconsin yeah yeah, yeah green so, bay yeah, yeah. uh i did mushrooms when i was in when high school it was uh it was pretty pretty intense experience um, do you think it had a profound impact on how you uh, started thinking about life? No, it was <laughs> honestly it was recreational. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We 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 got a pizza and it was like the best pizza I've ever had. So, uh, do you think as you get older, with the more context you have about life and like the more perspective you have about life, that that stuff kind of hits you harder the older you are? Because you just think about stuff in more detail yeah. anyway, yeah, just yeah, like yeah. a heightened sense of that. No, I think it gives us a different perspective on things. Mm. So, I mean, now now it's become legal in a lot of places and I thought it'd be nice to, to do it again in a kind of controlled setting and, yeah. and kind of yeah. explore. So when's things. the last time you did it? Oh, it's been a long time. Uh, not since college. No? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm curious to, honestly, I'll be honest, but I'm curious to try legally wherever that country may be. <laughs> <laughs> so you said you're, you're like a cafe, per, I mean, you're a coffee person first and cafe second, but I'm sure you're aware of like the cultural impact that like coffee shops have in the sense of like people just go there and meet each other. Yeah. And I feel like, especially in Bombay, Delhi, wherever, there's not enough places like that where you can just, cause we don't have too many like parks and stuff, you yeah. know, like not, I don't know anyone who goes to like parks and hangs out. But um, do you, do you kind of see that as a responsibility of your company at all? Or are you happy that it's a byproduct? You know, cause that is where people go to like meet and connect and really just share kind of life experiences. And yeah, stuff. I mean, so I think coffee and community go hand in hand. So exactly, it's yeah. hard to have a community if you don't have a place to visit. So, sure, so there's online communities and things like that, but I think it's not the same level of connection that you get yeah. having spaces that people can physically get together. Yeah. So we try and do events and activities to bring more people into mm. like meet and connect within the cafes. Yeah, yeah for sure, dude. I, oh, I think this that. is a insightful question I'll ask someone. If you could have one, <laughs> who's who's still? That's true. That's true. No, no, no. I said, I'm really smart. Yo, listen. This uh, question's yeah. fucking amazing. Just hear me out for a sec, bro. No, it's insightful. <laughs> <laughs> you get to you get to know something very specific about the person. Okay, which is, okay. If you were to have, a, if you could choose one superpower to have, what mm. would you choose? Damn. Ooh. Uh, I think it'd be really nice to fly. Dude. Because, yes. Uh, 
I yes. really like to travel, and if you could, or, or even better would be to like teleport. Teleport, yeah. yeah. Oh, but wouldn't you like have? Wouldn't you like to have the experience of like? No, no, I just want to skip that. I just oh, okay, okay. Yeah. okay. You just want to teleport that? Yeah. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Because <laughs> what if you fly slower than an airplane? Then yeah, he's just yeah. like. <laughs> I, I guess there's like situational flight, right? Like if you if you were in a mountain range, sure. and then you were at the top of the mountain range. Fly around a little bit, you know. Yeah. But I guess if your if your interest is travel, then travel Maybe and get to teleport there. to the top, check it out, come back. What's the What's your favorite place you've ever visited? Uh, so I've been going to Japan a lot. I really like that. Uh, we recently went to Thailand. That was a really nice place. Um, there's a lot of cities in Europe that are cool. Awesome. Yeah, I we, feel like we've wanted it. We literally just spoke about this the other day, where he was just like, "Dude, we have to." Save Japan for like a trip later down the road, man. Yeah, we've saved Japan for my bachelor trip and Egypt for his bachelor oh, trip. Yeah, oh, oh. to see the pyramids, that. man. Yeah, <laughs> point, you know what I mean. Yeah, what's yeah. up? You seen? Have you seen the pyramids? Yeah, yeah. Have you ever wondered how they built them? No, not at all. <laughs> What's, crazy, what's a bro? bachelor party without a three thousand year old body, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, any conspiracy yeah. theories you believe? Speaking of pyramids, mm. well, that's not a conspiracy. I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> It's not really a conspiracy, but like I, I don't think it's out of the like realm of possibility that like we're just living in some kind of simulation. Oh yeah, Ooh, mm, sure. that's that's for sure. I do believe that to some extent. Have Were you seen that? Have you seen that meme where it's like in 2020 it was a uh, there was the elections like everyone had their elections, the 49ers and the Chiefs were playing in the Super Bowl. Something else was happening. That's happening in 2024 as well. Oh, really? It's like the simulation is just repeating itself. No. Oh, crazy, wow. man. Yeah. You seen that? No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, wrong person to ask, man. Yeah, are you, you want to? Are you want to? Yeah, I know, I know, I know. I know, I know. <laughs> if you guys have seen that, let me know. <laughs> oh. We've uh, we've actually got gotten some um, inside information, and I've heard uh, about your. <clears throat> So your, your latte art skills. Yeah, yeah, they're amazing. So, uh, <laughs> What's your favorite thing to make on a on a latte art? I'm just happy oh. if I can get the foam. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so Jarvi was telling me that uh, that you're you're quite embarrassed about your latte art skills. I mean, I should be able to make a cappuccino. Like I should be, I yeah. you know, run this coffee company. At the very least, I should be able to make a cappuccino. Oh, I can make a good much? pour over. I can make a good espresso. But yeah, how much do you think like the milk? I know a lot of people out there. They like the frothed milk, right? Like, sure. how important do you think that is to like the coffee aspect? Because I usually drink it without milk. But I know you sometimes switch it up. So how important is the type of milk compared with the type of coffee? Or does that Yeah, not? it has to pair together. And mm. so if the like, milk is too thin, then you don't get the kind of the mouthfeel of it. If the if you don't foam it properly or you heat the milk too high, mm. that also ruins the taste. So there's definitely a technique to it. That's right. skill involved. So all you milk frothers out there. Shout out you guys. <laughs> you, know what's, you know what's up. So I think it'll be a good time for us to test your coffee skills a bit. All we right. have a cupping session planned where we're going to have you try and guess which estate this coffee comes from. So we have five Blue Tiger estates that we kind of picked. And yeah, we're just going to have you try and guess. I'm definitely going to fail. Do you, are you going to give me a like, <laughs> Can I pick one of five or something? Or I just have to guess totally off the to top? Guess, you have to guess off the top which one comes from which. And uh, when we spoke earlier, you said that three of these... Yeah, so there's three coffees that I drink. So if it's one of those three, then I'll be able to get that. The other sure. two... So nah. guys, for you guys who don't know, if he gets any less than two right, we get a lifetime supply of <laughs> <Blue Tiger> coffee. <laughs> oh, should we put him on the spot right now? Can you give us an exclusive code for everyone who's made it this far into the episode, which is like probably 40 minutes in, Yeah. for them to go to the cafe and get a free coffee? Sure, sure. I'll give a, a free coffee. You're asking a lot, right? <laughs> we're, we're a sponsor. <laughs> I'm here. We're doing this thing. Uh, I'm just I, asking. I can do, you can I say can, no. I can you do can a buy one, one get one for these you guys. Oh, that's, that's cool, man. man. That's cool. That's yeah, cool. Yeah. Let's do that. Sure. Okay, awesome. We'll put the code down below. But yeah, yeah. yeah. 160. Yes, 165. Yeah. You see this? See what's happening here? Said you can pour it all. You don't have to pour one by one. This is your fault. You've done. <laughs> yeah, shouldn't I, I, I shouldn't yeah, you be yeah. in charge of this? No, no, no. <laughs> oh, that's it's on the higher side of that, eh? See already. See now it's ruined, it's done, right? It's so it's, if, it's, if 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 uh, I get it wrong, it's not my fault. Pouring technique is totally wrong. It's gonna ruin the flavor. Gosh. I need well, if the if the beans are good, I think the flavor should stand up. So. <laughs> <laughs> beans are good. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, man, do you surf? 
at all? I've tried, yeah. not able to get up. Do you do you dive? Do you like water sports in general? Uh, I love going to the beach, but I I don't dive. Yeah, yeah. But you said like, what's your favorite sport? Because we spoke downstairs about like football, basketball. Is there any like fringe sport that you like? Do you like UFC? No, not really. No, no. You uh, wouldn't sponsor like if they asked you to come and sponsor an event. <laughs> you say no to that. <laughs> yeah, if if you want to host a football game, oh, maybe yeah, we'll sponsor yeah. that. Uh, <laughs> Imagine Blue Tech sponsoring UFC. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. But which which sport do you like tend to gravitate more towards, football or basketball? Uh, so I, I grew up in Wisconsin. I'm a mm. huge Packers fan. Yeah. I wake up at all hours of the night to yeah. watch the games. Have you been watching the games while you were in Delhi? Yeah, yeah. I watch every, every single game. one. Every yeah, game. That's crazy, Packers is the is Lil Wayne's team, right? Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah. It is. What do you feel about Aaron Rodgers uh, leaving and going to the Jets? Because I mean, he's kind of gone off the rails. So yeah, I'm he not, has I'm a little bit, dude. I'm happy that he's no longer. You're happy that he's not because I mean, if you guys had a team that could make the playoffs with uh, your QB right now. I feel I would feel Aaron Rodgers. I think would. Jordan Love has played better than Aaron Rodgers. Really? Yeah. Dude, that's a, a bold statement considering yeah. he just won MVP like two years in a row right but now. But then he didn't play this whole year. Well, he got injured. So, I mean, that was its own. Jordan Love didn't get injured. Oh, okay, I get it. I get it. I get it. <laughs> oh, I know that. It's like a LeBron Cleveland kind of thing. I, I get it. Sorry, just to pivot. I know that you and Namita had recently done a episode with uh, Blue Tech where y'all were talking about your journey on adoption. Yeah. So I remember that when you guys did start Blue Tech Namita was like six months pregnant and it was very kind of uh, hard for you guys to manage the company and the new uh, the new baby. But uh, how's stuff going? I mean, I know that the adoption process is a tedious thing. Any insight you want to offer to our viewers on that? Yeah, so I mean, I think a lot of people are worried about uh, whether they're going to love the kid as much as they, uh, their own uh, own child, and you know, I think, and whether their family will accept that, and you know, that's definitely something that we thought about. But uh, I mean, that kid's incredible. Like, it's just uh, mm -hmm. like it's it's interesting to see with your own kid. You can see your own uh, kind of traits in them, but to see someone who's has no blood connection to you, and just to see them and their personality, it's just like a, it's really an amazing feeling. Sure. I, I I assume you mean like it's interesting to see the habits they also pick up from you? No, just they're like, so when your kid, when your biological child does something, you can be like, oh, they're doing that because I was like that. Sure. Then when, when uh, someone else comes in with a totally different personality, it's just, uh, I don't know, it's very, it's a sort of like an indescribable feeling to just see like this, this person just came from who knows where so. and they're just like amazing and uh you know with your own kid you're like well i'm kind of amazing so yeah. my kid should be amazing <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. no but that's cool man i feel like once you once you go through that process then it just becomes like family right like even yeah. like you i'm sure you have some friends that you consider family so imagine having those friends as kids come to you yeah. you know what i'm saying it's kind of the same because yeah. then you just you, you just kind of become a family right so yeah. At what age That's did you cool. have your first kid? I would have been thirty-two. Thirty-two. Okay. Thirty-two. Wait, and when, did you, and when 31. did you get married? I was twenty-nine. Nice. He was twenty-nine when he met her as well. Yeah. <laughs> twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. I remember. Mean, oh, twenty-eight. 28. Okay. He made sure it crossed a birthday, yeah. so technically, he's like, yeah, I was twenty-eight. Yeah. Then I married at twenty-nine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Man, that's cool, bro. <laughs> No, no, I want you to screw it up because it's not going to be my fault when I, I get I, it. I will sit. I'm watching you. Don't worry. So rinse, oh, rinse that. Rinse yeah. the... Mm. See, already cross-contamination oh, has happened. This. Sit. <laughs> Jesus. Is there milk in that? No, no. No, no, oh. no. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, no. I need that. This is like finger painting. You know, when you're a kid, like you just have to rinse your hands off and stuff. So, Jay, this is what, when Rowan and I meet, like, on Sundays, this is what we do. Okay. Oh, my God, like, in a couple of hours. I mean, that's cool, bro. Everyone needs a hobby. You know, yeah. it's it's nice. I like how you call his entire company a hobby. <laughs> I mean, bro, <laughs> as in, like, <laughs> making the coffee is individually is, like, a hobby, yeah. right? Like, people are... See, so, actually, when you break it like that, you're supposed to smell it. That's yeah, yeah. where you get yeah. the most aroma. So but that's that's for See, I got one hand tied behind my back <laughs> while I'm doing this from this. But night. isn't isn't that cool though? It's like your business has given so many people a chance to like have a ho like it's super important to be occupied and to have a hobby that you actually give a shit about, you know? So yeah. 
Isn't it cool that you have been able to create that for so many people? No, I mean, I think coffee is just an amazing industry to be in. Yeah. Uh, I think there's so much, I mean, so the community thing we talked about already, but just how you can just be a casual coffee drinker and really like it, or you can go down kind of this other rabbit hole and, and do cuppings and really, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, get into different brewing methods and different recipes. Not I think for sure, bro. That's, uh, it's, it's never a dull day. Mm-hmm. You done I'm, said I'm, I'm like, <laughs> Patrick <laughs> even goes for this part. Oh, relax. What about <laughs> I remember you speaking about how like if you guys are one of the few companies in India who do regular quality checks on each roast. So like if the temperature is off by one degree or something, you just throw that batch out. Like you don't even serve it to customers. So uh, well, it'll go to a different process. So we have goals associated with the roast. So there's a computer that all the roasters are hooked up to, and there's a specific profile that the roasters so, have to follow. And if some of those goals aren't missed, then it are missed, then it goes to a separate QC process. Hmm. Sometimes one degree won't make a difference. So, it'll still so they score every batch. Yeah. And as long as it meets the the score, then we serve it. Sure. I want to ask one thing here. So I remember seeing, being in one of the cafes and I think we went for a, a cupping session in one of the BT cafes and they had this rainbow colored circular thing right, with all those flavor notes. Yeah. There's no way there are that many flavor notes <laughs> and there's no way there's such specific flavor notes. No, no, there's even more than that. How, how do people know that? that? Like, how can you decipher what is green apple versus like red apple versus this and versus, it's impossible. So if I uh, put a blindfold on you and I give you a green apple and a red apple, you wouldn't be able to tell no, the I mean, difference. Okay, bad example. <laughs> That's a bad example. It's like wine, right? But so, dude, yeah. there were too many, but no, how do you get those notes in coffee? Like we, we try to do these cupping sessions once we're done it. And we were trying to find which flavor from that entire rainbow color thing. And I mean, we were just being a bit, yeah. I think we were like just trying to find something at some point. Yeah, I mean, so I think it, uh, it's That's more- That's a bias, a confirmation bias. And like when you're looking at the flavor sheet. That can happen for sure. Yeah. But so there are people who are, they're, they're trained to do this. They're called Q graders. So they're able to identify all of these different uh, flavor characteristics. There's like these vials that you get of like uh, oils and you can sniff them and then you can be able Ooh. to tell the what, identify those flavors so uh, it's definitely uh, possible you just have to train your palate yeah it's to, a sense yeah. kind of thing right yeah. like sure. some people are like gifted musically so like yeah. if we play something and like the bass is off or whatever like he'll keep fiddling with my car bass even though I tell him to stop yeah and he like to find like the right kind of thing I would assume it's the same for yeah, yeah. coffee as well you just have to have a mouth for it yeah, yeah. You know, like, you've heard of those uh there was professions where there are only five yeah. whiskey Oh yeah, 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 in the yeah, world yeah, who can yeah. identify a whiskey. Is there something like yeah, that for yeah, yeah. coffee? Like there are these two, three, some mythical people <laughs> like who cheese, are out there. Like cheese tasters. Yeah, yeah. It's like, there's only around 50 people who are licensed the uh, Q graders in, wow, in, in the world. In, in, in India, in India, in India, which is still like, yeah, which is yeah. like in the world, there's only a few thousand. Number, bro. I think we had a chance to meet some of them at the coffee festival, the Mumbai okay. coffee festival. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Yeah, it's one of those things, right? It's like they create this whole aura behind yeah. this person. <laughs> Only he can know yeah. those flavor notes. I think that's cool, man. It adds like, they're kind of like magicians in the space, you know, like healers and stuff like that. And then you hear the stories where this, this guy's mouth or tongue is insured for like millions of dollars yeah, because yeah, yeah, his yeah. palate is like his oh yeah dude yeah, for yeah, sure yeah, isn't know? Ronaldo's leg insured like for like insured. some crazy amount of money yeah, bro? yeah, yeah. like the, those uh, the, the Somaliers and things like that yeah, yeah, yeah. yes yeah, yeah. Somalians yeah. <laughs> <laughs> love them there's water Somalias as well right yeah, but there's you like can, dude, you can definitely taste the difference. For in sure, water, but though, that's, that's what I'm saying. If, yeah, yeah, if yeah. people can do that, there's yeah, 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 definitely yeah. stuff you can do with coffee. Yeah. Water also? Or water, dude, yeah. Come on, you're telling me you can't taste the difference between like uh, water and water? <laughs> like if I give you like Aquafina and Himalayan, you're yeah, telling me you course, can't taste the difference? Of course, yeah, I mean, you can taste the difference, yeah. So then, you can taste the thunder also, you can have thumbs up. Taste test. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we've done a few. When uh, it comes up, become a sponsor. We, we've, we've done a few taste tests. So I think Aditya and I have developed this kind of... Like refined, refined palette. palette for like we've done uh, energy drinks, um, we've done cola tests, toothpaste, man. We've, we've done oh, dude, yeah. we did toothpaste as well though. Yeah, so what we toothpaste have like. What do you use? We're big toothpaste fans here. Uh, and toothbrush fans. Oh, Colgate. Which one? Yeah. Which one Sick. though? Which one? The salt one. Oh, oh salt that actually man. didn't uh, rank super high on our list. What's the highest? Tell me, what's the highest uh, ranking? Uh, we, uh, we did. Um, I think it was Max Fresh. Okay, that was the highest, the highest rated one. But wow. in terms of. My personal favorite is Miswak. You got to go okay. Miswak. Yeah. I'll have to check it out. Yeah. yeah. But also Colgate uh, charcoal. It's a great night. Oh, I've night had that. I've had that. Uh, it gives you just notes of um, 
charcoal. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool. It's nice. It's like charcoal and mint inside, and it's black, so it fits with the night. So it's good. Yeah, you don't get a lot of sea the salt flavor in the the Colgate, the Colgate salt. salt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, nah, they're frauds. Yeah, I want to talk to them about that. <laughs> so are we ready? Right. They're five coffees. I'm not gonna tell you which one. I'm gonna tell you what roast. Nothing. Just gonna put it in front of you, and you gotta guess. <laughs> They all are BT, of course. I'm just gonna. Oh, you should. Oh, you got one. these. You should have put one Nescafe yeah. in, in there, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. We'll put one Nescafe in them. Like, just to, yeah, just to throw them off a little bit, you know. Is there like a specific reason that he can't just drink it? Like oh, no. Yeah, just, no, no, no. Smell. I don't smell it. Yet. So mm. these are the bowls we use for all our copying sessions. Of course, shout out Rena. You guys know that we work with them on the show. Maybe uh, I'll try all. Like if we can put all of them. Yeah, yeah of course. Oh, yeah, You'll sure. have to compare. So that's number two. So do you want me as a middleman for this transaction? Yeah, sure. That'll be good. Number three. Oh, I should not have been trusted with this. Oh, he's mixing them up. No, 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 no. Number four. I actually am the worst person to be doing this. No, yeah. me, you and me. How do you bro. know? Yeah. Sid is the clumsiest guy ever. Dude, bro. I've been using these bowls a lot, though. I really like them. For your nasal irrigation. Okay. Right, the moment of truth. Ready? Can you give us a good slope? Like. Ooh, that's a high quality slope right there, man. That's <laughs> good. Okay. Oh. Is there a specific reason that you have to use a spoon or is it like a, a lip feel kind of thing? It's easier to slurp. So it's easier oh, to slurp. Okay. Uh, just drink it. You're not going to be able to slurp very well. So the reason you slope, I was telling you guys earlier, is so that although Sorry. you have the highest mm. contact with your uh, yeah. flavor. They must love you in Japan then, because I hear it's like good manners yeah, to slurp. Yeah, yeah, slurp your noodles. Yeah, because like you're enjoying it so much that like you just, you're just like, ah, I gotta Don't have get it, enough. You know? Yeah. You want to enjoy every particle of flavor. Mm. Really? It is, I swear to God. It, just, it, it seems like, you know, you're making noise while eating or while No, 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 it. it's considered like a very like uh, polite thing to do, I guess. It'd be so funny if he gets all of them wrong. <laughs> okay, so Matt, what's a what's a respectable score for you, like out of five? One. No, no, no. no. It's gotta be three. <laughs> Come on, no, it's gotta be more. more higher than average. We have like twenty five coffees. Yeah, a three out of five. I think is respectable. That is saving face. Especially because you said you drink three of these, so you know which ones. I mean, mean, this is the Riverdale. Okay. Number one. Wait, don't 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 checker. reveal yet. You can. Oh, oh okay. Sure. I mean, come on, give me. Some. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we, 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 we can give that. you. We can give you as you go along, just so he can eliminate. Okay, it, wait. You know? Number one is correct. That is Riverdale. Hey, hey okay. guys. Now I'm done. I, now, now <laughs> yeah. I'm done. That's that's sitting my favorite coffee yeah. as well, the Riverdale. So much suspense. <laughs> and there's a slope in the middle. <clears throat> Mm. You got a double slope on that one. <laughs> <laughs> double slope. Did you put Vienna in here? Might be. Is that a guess? Is that is yeah. that a final? Ah, uh, close. It's the French roast. Oh. Ah, it's a, it's a close yeah, one. That trips yeah. me up every time. As well. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one of these is a Kerry Haklu. Yeah, I could tell this one was the dark. It's just yeah, by it how was, it looked. Yeah. Also. Uh, and. Uh, so I, I would have no idea what the... <sighs> okay, I you were right. One of them is a Kerry Haklu. Uh, and he which guesses one? which one? So is, of the is three. It, of two, three, and four. Ooh. Oh, no, it's not, it's not the fourth one. Not the fourth. <sighs> I'm trying to think of what are the other light roasts we have on the menu right now. I don't think you'd have any of those. This one is a Kerry Haklu, that, too. That is correct. Oh, yeah. nice, that nice. was precision, man. That was you great. Gotta get, you gotta get one more out of these. I've already two. got three. No, you got two. That oh, one. He, yeah. that's a French oh, It's a hard one, but I won't oh, give yeah, you that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the dark roast, you can't even tell the difference. Like, yeah. It's all the same. Uh, but then the I think this one's silver oak. And what do you want to guess for the other one? I have no idea. Oh, then I... Okay, uh, so... I mean, I would guess Sita Gundu, but I don't... Okay, so one of them is Silver Oak. It's not number four. Oh, oh no, it's number three. Oh, damn. It's number three. Really? So it's you have quite to... light. That is Silver Oak, yeah. <sighs> Someone's getting fired at the roastery today. <laughs> <laughs> and Silver Oak is the one you use in the stores, right? That's yeah, the store yeah. blend. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you have one number four left. You can take a guess. If you get it, 
it's over three out of five, so you're yeah, we'll give safe it to face. You. MS Estate. Wait, wait, can I can I try? Yeah. Slope away, my man. <laughs> if Adi gets this right and, and he got the wrong one. This is one we used to have a lot. That, that is true, yeah. Uh, it's probably Mississippi State. Um, I'm confused between Stanmore and Unaki. I don't think... So. I, think it's, I don't think Unaki. Is it one of those? Can you help them out right now? It's not those. Ah, oh, okay. damn. Those are, it's not a natural, I don't think. Mm. That one's definitely not a natural. Okay, so... Um, <coughs> are there any, any guesses? Or should no. So the number four coffee is the Attican. Oh. oh. Yeah. We used to have it. We used to yeah, have but yeah. it doesn't taste that dark to me. Attican is like dark on the roast roast, right? man. Attican is medium. Yeah, I'm telling you, it's all the technique. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Silver you, you oak is tasting bit, light. Yeah. Attican's <laughs> tasting light. <laughs> if it, we give you, we give you half for the for so the, two and a half. Two I and a half out of five. Okay, that's cool. That's, that's like cool. I'll take it. That's I'll take it. Oh, uh, finally, before we get to your empty shelf item, which I think you would have brought us one, is I just want to pay you a compliment, if that's okay. I wanted to let you know that in the space of Indian business, uh, you find a lot of people who are extremely successful that could be could serve as male role models. But I, the reason I wanted to have you on the show is because I really view you as a male role model that I look up to, uh, on, not only because of your success with Blue Tikai, but... Um, it seems like you care a lot about your family. Your daughters and your wife are very important to you and you've been partners with them for such a long time and it's something I aspire to. So I just wanted to take the time to let you know that oh, thanks. Uh, I appreciate it's cool it. to have a male role model. Thanks, thanks. They'll, they'll say I don't appreciate them enough, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad. The optics, the yeah, optics yeah, yeah. are good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I'm doing the it right looks, thing. It I don't looks know, like that, so <laughs> yeah. you're good. Yeah. Uh, they probably think that you planted this compliment. <laughs> Actually, the thing that I brought is in my bag downstairs. Oh, okay. okay can we we'll, get get it? It? we'll get it, we'll get it. Hey, when do you guys do the Bangalore uh, roastery tours? What time of the year? Uh, you can just go there anytime. Okay. But isn't there a specific season for the harvest? You mean the farm tour? The farm tour. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it finished. Uh, do you want me to do a reveal on the... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can hide it a little bit. Uh, so so it's it's good we talked about socks a lot and so and 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 you know dirty socks also. <laughs> uh, so. Make him make him touch it since you're his role yeah, model. Yeah. Make him make him touch it, bro. Yeah, touch your socks. Pair of uh, mismatched hey, Wisconsin socks. Let's go, dude. <laughs> They're clean though. So They're clean. Uh, don't worry about it. I'm glad you're <laughs> <laughs> awesome thank you so much man. that's yeah. great dude this is not the first sock we have on the show oh really yeah. oh yeah we have a rainbow somewhere oh we didn't put it up because oh, oh. it didn't win oh uh, yep, yeah, yep, yeah. yep yep yep, okay. yep. <laughs> awesome thank you guys uh, thank you Matt for being here thank you guys for watching and uh, we'll obviously link everything of Blue to guys in the description go buy their coffee use our code make sure he knows that we're, <laughs> we're working hard here and uh, we'll see you next week for the having said that show peace cheaper by the dozen Hate them on you, love them If you make me feel away Then I might switch up for your cousin Keep one in the dark And I'll keep them all in the oven If you wanna stop me